Hi, my name is Ramin Satuda, the Executive Editor at Variety. Welcome to our Creators Fest. I'm here with one of our Power of Young Hollywood cover subjects, Thomas Doherty, for a discussion about the new Gossip Girl and playing Max Wolf. Thomas, thanks so much for joining us. I just watched episode five of Gossip Girl and many of us at Variety are, um, shall I say, obsessed with the show. We really love it very much and have been binging it. How has your life changed since Gossip Girl started? Um. Honestly, not huge. I, obviously, I, mo- I lived in LA for a while and I've moved out to New York. Um, but I mean, honestly, apart from that, I kind of keep myself to myself, generally. The show's been airing in a very interesting way in that it's not, we're not binging all of it at once. Um, it's one episode a week and then it's kind of like the British model where you guys are going to take a break and then we're going to get more episodes in the winter. How do you think that's help sort of the show build buzz and do you prefer that or would you rather have people be binging Gossip Girl all day long? Yeah I mean I remember like growing up and you had to like wait a week for your show the next episode of whatever show you were watching to come out and I loved it and like during the week you'd be in school and you'd be talking about it and what's gonna happen next and you had like time to reflect and kind of ruminate on it and connect with it more and I feel like now when they just drop stuff. It's hard to just turn it off and be like, I'll watch it next week. No, you just, you binge it and you watch it all. And so you don't really appreciate it as much. So I'm really happy that HBO Max is doing that because I feel like people are gonna appreciate it more. Are you guys, you're currently filming right now? Still filming, yeah. And so are you having any seasonal challenges where are you filming like winter episodes now that it's still in the summer or are you? I did a, I did a scene the other day and we so yeah, we were shooting winter and summer and summer and winter and I did a scene the other day and I had boots on, uh, trousers, a tank top, a shirt, a big jacket and a scarf and I was halfway through a scene and I was like can we stop because I could feel sweat dripping down my face and I saw the other two actors just looking at the sweat dripping down my face. <laughs> so yeah, it's rough. So it's Christmas time right now. It's Christmas Girl. time. Thanksgiving episode's coming up. Talk to me a little bit about how you came to this role. Um, you had to audition for it, correct? Yeah. What did you, when you first heard that they were rebooting Gossip Girl, what did you think? Oh, I thought it was really exciting. You know, Gossip Girl is such a cultural and social influence. I mean, it's had such a huge one. Um, and so it's very, very iconic in that sense. And so the fact that they were rebooting it was exciting. I mean, it's, it's more a continuation rather than a reboot. And I had actually just watched it maybe a couple months prior because I was filming in Georgia. And my girlfriend at the time, she'd watched it quite a lot and I'd always be kind of milling about in the background and it was on. And on my days off, I just started watching Gossip Girl. So when it came out, I was I thought it was a, a really cool idea and I was really intrigued to see who it who they'd cast in it. And I knew that HBO Max was doing it instead of the CW, which was really, really cool. Because mm-hmm. uh, the production value is obviously just a lot more heightened. Um, and yeah, then I got a call from, from my team saying they'd like you to come in an audition. And I went through the rigmarole of auditioning, which was actually quite a pleasant experience. It's pleasant, why? Uh, well, the casting director, Sandra, she's Bra- uh, Cassandra. She's amazing. Uh, and she just made it such like a fun experience. I feel like a lot of the time when you're auditioning, your like creativity in the audition room is kind of compromised because you're, you're subconsciously or consciously thinking about the job, thinking about how can I book this? Uh, and with Cassandra, she like takes time and she talks to you and we talk about the character and try it a load of different ways. She really gives you a lot of time and energy. Um, and so then you just have fun and it's like an acting class. Did you, were you only auditioning for Max or were there other characters that you were also looking at? No, I actually was auditioning for Max and Ovi, Eli's character. And I actually went quite far with both of them. And then it c- came to a point where it was like, what one do you want to go ahead with to try and get the role of? And Max was just better suited to me. So you made the decision that you would pursue Max as opposed yeah. to them coming to you and saying that they want you to play Max. Well, I mean, I think they definitely did have a preference as well, but they did they did kind of pose a question. Tell me about building Max. Like, what is it about him? What was he like on the page? What was it that appealed to you about Max? Well, the first impression I got of Max was it was definitely a young person 
trying to be something, like a facade, like a veil. It's almost like he was playing himself. Um, and the minute I saw that, that really excited me because that instantly gives a character some dimension, some depth, because there's obviously some below that, that that you can really like tap into and like who they authentically really are. Uh, and so that gives it some really nice color. And as well, it's just a really fun character. Uh, I love play, I always think that I'm like a character actor trapped in a, in a leading male's body and face. So it was really fun to get these these fun characters. There was a scene, I think it's in episode three, where some of the people on Twitter were had captured it, the scene where Max shows up to high school in a, I think in a, is it an ambulance from Mount Sinai Hospital? And <laughs> Kisses the male and female um, yeah. nurses. Yeah. Um, is there ever a time where you read the script and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to land this, or I don't know, or like, or like you're just like delighted at what he's doing next? I think I actually kissed about four of them. I think they only showed two. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You were kissing four of the nurses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why I did mean, they cut that down? I don't know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a pleasure to play a character like that and it's always really exciting and there's a lot of variety and it keeps it kind of fresh and keeps it exciting for me to like go on set and, and, and play these different scenarios uh, and different interactions with people and I mean the, the, the team's amazing, really supportive, kind of ask what you're comfortable with, you're uncomfortable with this and I generally am comfortable with anything, I mean it is a character at the end of the day and you want to try and stay true to that. Um, it's more if the other person I'm doing, say, an intimate scene with is uncomfortable. Um, then that kind of like changes the dynamic. But yeah, I, I like to kind of just emerge myself in, in whatever character I'm playing. How has it been playing um, a queer character or a pansexual character and having sort of the response that um, you're getting? Uh, people really like him and are rooting for him and seem to be very invested in him. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Like, I mean, I think generally the show's um, evolution, consciousness is fantastic. There's a lot more represent representation um, ethnically, gender identity, sexual identity. So that's been amazing and there's obviously long ways to go still, but uh, I definitely, that was something that really drew me to want to do this. Um, and for for me personally, like I, I I have always seen sexuality as a spectrum, um, but playing playing Max, playing a pansexual character, uh, was incredibly liberating. It was very educational, and it definitely did make me challenge my own preconceived notions, my indoctrination almost of a this patriarchal kind of this is who you love, this is what you do, this is who you marry, everything else is kind of wrong or um and so it definitely did make me I mean I didn't have them but there was definitely niggles of, of, of that condition still in me. And like I say it was incredibly liberating. So do you not believe in labels since you think sexuality is on the spectrum? Yeah, it definitely is a spectrum. I mean I don't think there's any arguing with that and I personally I mean not no not really I don't I think it is very limiting um, and I don't know I think as I as I as I get older and experience life a little bit more mm, you just constantly evolve and you're constantly growing and I feel like labels limit you they're almost like walls to your growth and that's basically the audience that's watching gossip for a lot of the audience that watches the show believes in that and it's very different than how the previous iteration of the show was definitely and i think it's really important as well for people that don't believe in that to kind of be exposed to that can you talk a little bit about becoming max physically yeah i mean that's the first thing that that I did, it was about getting the physicality right. I feel like it all kind of stems from there with me. I'd speak to Cassandra and I'd speak to Josh and, and figure out how we would sit and how we would stand and in different situations how we would, how we would move. And so I guess I kind of just, I, I built up from there and he, I, he has this like suave, very laid back, uh, charming kind of like thing about him, the way he moves and then that kind of transfers into his voice and the way that he speaks and Gossip Girls, the script is oh, it's almost like a, a language in itself. And so it was about how to to utilize that for the character to support 
the way that I saw the character. Um, but again, going back to the depth, like it, no one really acts like Max. It's, it's definitely a like a front. And so when I have scenes with my dads or or my dads. It's, <laughs> 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 uh, it's um, yeah, it's really, it's really fun to play with that, how that changes and how the physicality changes. Like, yeah, it's really, really interesting and really fun to play. And obviously I worked with the dialect coach for a while uh, to work on the old American accent. The script is so funny, but it's also so cutting edge in its references. How much of sort of the cultural implications of queer culture did you know? Like, did you know what scruff was? or when Max goes to um, a bar in the East Village, which, is, which with names I won't say, because it's an explicit name, but like, did you know that some of the references before you were playing him, or someone on the team like walk you through some of the references in the script? I, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't know much. I mean, well, I mean, I've just moved to New York, uh, and so, and I've been working so much in COVID and stuff, so I've actually not been out at all that much. Um, so yeah, I had to get I had to get taught about all of the different hot spots in New York. What's been your favorite place in New York to shoot? We shot at Webster Hall, which was really really cool. Um, that was so iconic. You think about how many bands and artists have performed there, and I also like loved shooting on the Met Steps. Like I thought that that was just again I'm going to use the word iconic, but it really is. It's so you associate that with Gossip Girl, and it's. And that was really, really cool. And when I got there, I really made a conscious effort to kind of like take it in. Um, and I think that was like the first time that it kind of hit me that I was doing such a cool show. But any exterior shots, any exterior scenes, I think it's just so cool being from Scotland, filming in New York, seeing the yellow cabs going past and all that. Tell me a little bit about growing up in Scotland. So you, um had always wanted to be an actor, or how did you come into acting? I kind of just gradually started doing it. I mean, I think when I was maybe five or six, my my mum sent me to an acting class, acting school, um, and I loved it. And I enjoyed it, and it was fun. And from there, I kind of like just continued to do it. Uh, but it wasn't very cool at the time, so I was living a double life. I was like Billy Elliot. I was playing like soccer. I was like a soccer guy, and then. I, on the weekends and after school, I'd be doing acting classes and theatre, and then I eventually started doing musical theatre. Yeah, it was just a very quintessential Scottish upbringing. I know that helps you not at all, because you don't know what that is, but just very, very normal school, football, um, and then obviously my double life. I mean, I used to go into school with my school bag and I'd have my books at the top, and then I'd have like my packed lunch, and then I'd have like all my football stuff. And at the very bottom of the bag, I'd have like tap shoes and all my like theater stuff. What was your first job as an actor? I did a Disney show in Ireland. I filmed that. The Lodge, right? The Lodge, yeah. yeah. I finished college, and I was just working in bars and restaurants and things. Um, and I couldn't afford to live in London, so I was still living in Edinburgh. So I used to travel down on my days off to London, um, and I'd get I I I'd, I'd have enough money to, for a plane down there, and I'd go down and I'd audition, I'd audition and stuff and like just have general meetings with cast and directors and producers and things, uh, and then I'd get on a night bus, drive back up overnight on the night bus, get off the night bus, and then just go straight to work. And I did that for maybe like seven, seven or eight months. And then I got this job, and I was like, oh, God, thank God. And after that, you were cast as um, Captain Hook's son in The Descendants 2, directed by Kenny Ortega. How did being on a Disney Channel show change, or movie, change your career? Well, it was definitely, I mean, Disney's such a huge platform, and there's a lot of exposure, so it definitely did mm -hmm. give me that. Um, and it was my first time on a movie set, which was really exciting, which was really cool. And Americans love Disney. They like they go mad for Disney, so that was that was really interesting. Kind of first time getting stopped in the street and asked for pictures and stuff. Um, People would recognize you from the Descendants. Yeah, wherever, wherever you were in the world or just in America. I see wherever in the world. Yeah, more more America. Um, but no, it was cool and it was really exciting and you kind of got a flavor of that world, fame and 
all that kind of thing. Did you make a conscious decision that you no longer wanted to be in sort of Disney projects, or did you? Yeah. Sort of, you did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I always think about it. Like it was never like a goal. It was never a dream. But I mean, I'm an actor, you know, and I need to work, and that's what kind of fell in front of me. So I went for it. How do you consume content? Do you watch stuff on your phone or on TV, or how do you prefer to sort of consume content? There's such a debate about content right now in entertainment and sort of the future of entertainment. What's your preference for um, watching TV shows or movies? It has to be a TV. I, I moved into my apartment here uh, in, in Brooklyn, and then I walked in and there was nothing. There was just a mattress on the floor. There was no food, there was no towels, there was nothing. And I went straight to Best Buy and bought a massive TV. <laughs> so yeah, it has to be TV. I can't, I can't, I can't do phone. Jesus, no. What have you been streaming lately? Oh, I think I'm rewatching Peaky Blinders. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Kelly and Murphy. Do you think there's going to be more seasons of Gossip Girl? I think so. I mean, the feedback we've gotten so far seems to be really positive. Uh, and it's just like fantastic fabulous, ridiculous escapism. And there's some relatability with yourself and the characters, but there's also, like I say, this escapism where you can just indulge in obscene wealth and nonsense. Uh, and I think people enjoy that. And I think as well, especially after COVID, people want something fun, lighthearted to watch. What has it been like being part of the cast of a hot show like, and you're all kind of coming into your own, living in New York for the first time. Like, do you guys feel like, like this is a special moment, like you're all collectively sharing together? Or has it been strange because of COVID that you haven't really been able to sort of go out in public? We started shooting in October. Okay. Um, and the, 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 the rules and things are a lot more stringent mm -hmm. in October compared to now. And we were obviously filming, and so we couldn't get COVID because we'd shut down the production. So we were kind of in a, in a bubble and we really, really, it was a really amazing opportunity. We really like connected with each other because we couldn't see other people. Right. Um, and yeah, it's really exciting. And I mean, it's some people's first jobs and stuff, so. Where would you like to see yourself go beyond Gossip Girl? I know you said you wanted to do musical theater and Broadway. Yeah, I'd love to do Broadway. I'd love to do musical theater. I'd love to do plays Um, I'd love to do Film, I think film's really amazing because it's kind of like the theatre process where you have time to rehearse and time to really like create a character and, and their evolution within the film. Whereas TV is a bit different because you, can, you don't know what's going to happen in the next episode. So you kind of just have to follow the writers and the showrunner blindly. Unfortunately, we have an amazing team, so. Can you talk a little bit about working with Josh Safran and what it's been like creating the world of Classic Girl? Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing. He's such like a collaborator. He's so open to, to suggestion and to kind of listening to how we see the character and where we feel like the character is going to go. Uh, and he's, he's very, very hands-on. He's always on set. Um, so it's really nice to have him there and to kind of also speak to the director, but also kind of like speak to him. Is it hard filming a show during COVID? Yeah, well, it's such a it's such a change, you know. You're so used to just walking on set and like sharing a van with someone, going to set or having a craft day. But all of that kind of stuff's gone away and obviously you have to wear masks. You do a scene and you put your mask on, which is bizarre. And we, we had the premiere and there was a, so many people from set came, but I'm so used to just seeing them with their masks on. And so they'd be like, hi, how's it going? I'd be like, good, you? Because <laughs> I didn't yeah, know who it was. was. Didn't know who they were. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's been fine and you, you get used to it. Humans have such an amazing ability to just adapt. I mean, they might not want to, but they, they do. And then the last thing I wanted to ask you about is in terms of acting, how do you feel like, how important is social media to your presence as an actor? Um, do you feel like, as an actor, you have a responsibility to be on social media? And do you feel like that's part of your brand now? Do you see yourself as a brand? No, I, I, I don't see myself as a brand at all. Um, and I don't see anyone else as a brand. I think people do cultivate opportunities, and social media is a really good platform for that. 
and it's an amazing way for me to connect with fans and, and things like that. Um, but I am an, uh, I'm not a huge fan of social media. I don't think it's a very positive addition to our world. And I worry for younger people on it. Um, but for me, I mean, I, I think I haven't followed everyone because I, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. But I do still, I do, do sometimes have a pre presence. And like I say, it is a, it's a really good platform to be able to connect with people and for people to see kind of what you're up to and what you're doing. Thomas, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, man. Thank you.